listening to the Sermon Audio Podcast from Redeemer Lutheran Church and Pastor Paul Pett. Subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast app. Peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for our message is our epistle, and I'm going to read just a portion of that one more time. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. This is our text. Please pray with me. Father, we ask, fill us with your spirit. Fill us in mind and in heart and in soul to remember who we are. Your choice has called us so that we might remember it is by your love that we are here. Help us to hear the word of a loving, gracious, and mighty God, not those of a mere sinful servant. In your name, amen. Wes, could you put up the picture, the first picture I've got in there? I want you to think back to our first reading from Revelation. And I want you to hear those words as you look at this picture. These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And then the words, a multitude that no one could number, from every nation, tribe, people and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Now, get a good image of the picture on the screen in your head. Close your eyes. Who is it that you long to see? Who is it that you look forward to seeing who you haven't seen for a long time, or maybe you've never seen. Dwell on that thought, on that face, on that person. Now open your eyes. Of all of those that ran through your mind, who was primary? Who's the first one? Who's the one that was of your greatest importance. Mom? Who says mom? Okay, a lot of moms. Who says dad? Dads? Who says sibling? Who says husband or wife? Okay. As you look, do you picture yourself there? You picture the people who have influenced your life. You know, as I talked about primary role model, there are people who have influenced my life in little ways and some in bigger ways. There's a reason that I pray before every sermon. I have a college professor who taught me uh, Greek, and I thought highly of him, and I honor him by praying before every message. I have two seminary professors that taught me how to preach, and I think of them every time I prepare. And so I want you to think about all of those different people and how God uses them to influence not only who we are and what we are, but especially whose we are. And I want to emphasize whose we are as we listen to this and listen to the epistle reading. So Wes, if you go back to the epistle reading, I want to look at that again. So in 1 John chapter 3, this is his word. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. Now read it with me. That we should be called children of God. And so... We are. Do 
Do you think of yourself as a child of God? Hmm. I didn't hear a whole lot of positivity in that response. Do you think of yourself as a child of God? And so if you think of yourself as a child of God, does everybody around you think of you that way? Listen to the next sentence. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. A lot of our world today doesn't want us to be in the public square with our faith. A lot of the world today doesn't want us to be seen as Christians. They want us to be seen as consumers. They want us to be seen as voters. They want us to be seen as all kinds of other things, but not as Christians because Christians means that they might have to confront something in themselves that they don't want to confront. And when they do, they don't like it. Jesus warned us about this. Wes, go to the passage in John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, Jesus says this. If the world hates you, read it with me, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. True or false? Very true. Oh, you're one of us. Live the way we live. Do what we do. But don't do anything against us. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Go back to the previous slide again, Wes. I want you to look at the very last phrase on the screen. But I chose you out of the world. And I want you to have that ring in your head. Now, look at the epistle reading again. I want you to hear that word. Well, that's the epistle reading. I want you to hear that word. See what kind of love the Father has given to us. What's the most important word in that phrase? Love. That's the motivator for what? His choice of you. And it's his choice. Because we're sinners and we were born in sin, separated from God, but by choice. He calls us to be his joint. By choice, he brings us into his family. By choice, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. That means in the midst of whatever else is going on in our lives, we have to hold tightly, strongly, and primary to that identity. Next slide, Wes. Beloved, we are God's children now. How? Let's go. Wes, go down to the next verse. No, no, no. Um, the other one. Galatians 3, 26. Last part of 26 and verse 27. Read it with me. For in Christ Jesus you are God How? For as many as you as were baptized How are you a child of God? Baptism. God's choice. God's selection. God's embracing of you as his child. That changed your identity, that changed you from a child of this world to a child of God, sons of God, daughters of God, and baptized children of God. That changed you to be that identity. The next verse, Wes, on the next slide, if you would. Romans 8, verses 14 and 16. For 
All who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God by his choice, by his selection. And this is a selection out of love and by grace. Remember those two words, out of love and by grace. Why is that so important? It is a gift. We can't think that somehow, well, I'm pretty good looking. That's why God chose me. <laughs> I'm a pretty smart guy. Clipped all my nose hairs today. Somebody's going to say, no, you didn't. I see one. And we can look at all kinds of things that are physical like that, but it's got nothing to do with what's on the screen. Led by the Spirit of God or sons of God. And the Spirit bears witness that we are children of God. What difference should that make? in the here and now. What difference should that make for eternity? Wes, go back to the epistle reading again, and I want to go to uh, verse 2 again, and I want to finish that out. Right after the semicolon, or, um, excuse me, right after the first, uh, the second comma, and what we will be has not yet appeared. So what are we hoping for? Perfection. How many of you are perfectionists? Be honest. Okay, not as many as I thought there would be. Are you frustrated with yourself, with yourself when you mess up? Frustrated with yourself when you make mistakes? Frustrated with yourself when you sin and you think, boy, am I stupid. That means you long for something better. You're longing to be what's ahead. What we will be is not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall, meaning what? Perfect. Back to where he wanted us to be when he created us back to where he wanted us to be from the very beginning, back to that perfect, on absolutely flawless human being, but now even better because we will be in glory with him. When he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is, in glory, free of any sin, pain, suffering, sadness, anything that can cause us any frustration is gone. And that's his promise. In verse 3, Wes, if you would, and everyone who thus hopes in him What does that mean? Do we look at ourselves and say, what I am in right now is okay with God? Or do you doubt that? I mean, be honest. If you look at yourself right now as you are, God's okay with this. I'm pretty good. I'm going to heaven just as my am. Or, boy, I need work. And if there's any doubt in between, we need work. Because we want to be like him. And that goes back to the role model thing. We can think about all kinds of people who have been various kinds of role models. And as uh, Kara talked with the kids, we can remember people in our lives, mentors, um, people that we considered very close and dear to us who taught us lots of things but there's only one, only one who is perfect. Shouldn't he be our primary role model? And shouldn't we seek to model ourselves, purify ourselves as best we can toward that? 
But can we? Can we do that of our own? Uh Uh-uh. So we have to continue to come back here. Continue to remember our baptism. Continue to come to this altar. Continue to receive his body and blood. And as we just talked about, continue to confess our sins with the goal of having absolution. That is... Oh my goodness. We just said it this morning. Absolution. That is... Thank you. Forgiveness of sins. That's the real purification. So when we go about life in this world, do you remember who you are? But do you remember who you are? I said this before, and I'm going to say it again, and I want you to repeat it again, And every time you're struggling, every time you're experiencing trials or frustration or anxiety or fear or whatever it is, when you step into the ballot box on Tuesday or you've already voted, whatever the case is, I want you to think of these words. Say them, repeat after me. I am a redeemed and baptized child of God, I am a redeemed and baptized child of God. Say it fast. I am a redeemed and baptized child of God. I am a redeemed and baptized child of God. I am a redeemed and baptized child of God. Now we have to live that. Live that for the world to see it. Live that in everything we do, live that no matter what we're doing out in our world. The world has to see a difference. Because if we're blending in with the world, what are we? The world. If we're living who we are, if we're living our identity, who are we? I am a redeemed and baptized child of God. Live it, show it, let it be seen in you. In Jesus' name. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Spirit be to abide with us all. Thanks for listening. At Redeemer Lutheran Church, our mission is to share with all people the good news of Jesus Christ, teaching faith and love. Learn more about our ministry at RedeemerLutheranGB.com.